Hi, I'm Rebecca Bradley. This is the Virtual Crime Book Club. The date is Monday the 12th of September 2022 and today we are discussing Malice by, I have to look at it to be able to pronounce it, Kiego Higashino. I'm sorry, Kiego, if I butchered that. Um, Spoilers will be discussed, so if you are watching this as a video and not engaging in the chat, be aware you might want to read the book first. Um, okay, so we shall start as we always do. <laughs> Did you enjoy the book? Yes. Yes. Did anybody not enjoy the book? We have a full house of enjoyment. Oh. Huh. Wait, can anyone not enjoy Kigashino? Kigashino? Well, it's Never the first read. time I've read him. Oh, yeah. I've, I've read uh, some of the books in the same series, and he has another series with another detective, Galileo, which is just as good. Smart plots, very, very smart plots. Mm. You think you got it all, and then, oops, there's t- more twists coming. Oh, and more twists coming again. <laughs> So what did people like about... Okay, then, going on that, is anybody else like me a first-time reader? Yes, me. Yeah. So me we've got too. a few first-time readers, and about half and half. Okay. So what did people enjoy um, particularly about Malice? He wasn't, pre- he wasn't predictable. Mm. It was a completely different um, culture of how uh, um, an investigation would be done, which in Mm. itself I thought was interesting. Lots of surprises. And the structure also of the book, you know, all done from notes, from reports and notes. I'm Muriel. Hi, sorry I'm late. No, it's fine. We're at the beginning. We've just asked if everybody enjoyed the book. <coughs> yes. How did you find it? I I loved it. Um, I read it uh, a few years ago when uh, my husband gave it to me because he he knows I like uh, different types of um, uh, detective stories and and because I like the uh, Japanese culture. I, he thought I might try that, and I really enjoyed it. Although I found um, sometimes the characters very cold. I don't know if it's the translation that does that, but they were a bit like cold fish, I found. Mm. So, mm. do you think there was... What were the... <clears throat> Let me try and I've written it down. It's easier if I read it. <laughs> the book was translated from Japanese. What were the differences that you noticed in style from English as a first language police procedurals? Mm. Mm. Well, I mean, it wasn't a conventional police procedural anyway it was all very much the psychology of it all wasn't it and the detective it's a bit cat and mouse the detective with uh uh nonoguchi isn't it where you know the detective almost has already dis- already suspects him they know each other from before mm. so it so they're really mm. kind of almost taunting each other so um and and I'm trying to think I don't think in any other um uh novels by by Higashino I don't think that in any of them there is this conventional there is the police you know there is the detective but it's always this battle of the wits really there's another one where he knows who's done it but it's about and and it's all about proving that they could do that he could have done it because he's got like a solid alibi and so on so it, it's it's that kind of thing you know it's this sort of psychological warfare if you like between 
the the evildoer and the, the murderer and the the police which is very unusual i suppose it would be bad policing wouldn't it if you really had decided made up your mind beforehand who's done it and you're just trying to catch them mm. it was very different in style though to anything um Mm. English first as a first language crime novels mm. um did you enjoy the difference in style and pace um I know Muriel said at times it felt like a bit cold did anybody else find that or did you enjoy the um steadiness of the pace but I think that the way that it was done as somebody said it's all done with notes so you you haven't got an author putting in anything about anyone's character, so it's bound to come over um, much more sort of um, cold and impersonal. Did did that affect how you how you read it? Did you connect okay with the people with the book? I think I connected more with uh, with Kaga than with. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> um, yeah, so I... But I, I wonder if, again, that is the author's intention. You know, we have this cold-blooded evil um, murder oh, nun. Oh, you know, so... Um, it's unlikely that he will be portrayed as, you know, your friendly neighbour next door. Although in the first part, mm -hmm. so if you don't, I for me it was a reread of the book. I too had read it a, a while ago. But when you read, I was now carefully knowing what was coming. I read the first part carefully, and I was thinking, "Oh, this seems very plausible." You know, you almost believe everything he's telling you, and you think that actually his his friend Hidaka is the cold one because of having poisoned um, the the. Cat. the, Cat. the the pet the mm. neighbor's pet and so on so you know so you totally buy into it and then of course suddenly it all changes and you realize that wow he really has is very cold-blooded and has planned it all along and the way he he portrays things yeah very slippery and you know no, I didn't even sorry. though as I said or as I highlighted earlier it was made from notes I didn't have this feeling of of coldness really of you know the the characters and uh, somebody said I think it was not very personal. I I thought you know some notes, especially some Kaga's notes, but also Nanobushi's. Sometimes I forgot that he was notes. I felt like they were talking to me. You know I didn't feel that that coldness. You know, and also I wanted to um, come back to something Marina's mentioned. Marina mentioned earlier. Uh, I've read that. Asian, the Asian mentality for for uh, mystery detective stories, they don't care about who did it. The big thing is really how the detective focuses more on how the detective is going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And like old classics, like I think I forgot who. Sorry, Mar Marina, you probably know. Uh, there's a classic Japanese author who retook some of Sherlock Holmes' story or a quarrel, and they kind of read it those stories, but they tell you right away who did what, and because the focus is now, how is the detective going to figure it out? And I think that's what I really enjoy a lot in Japanese mysteries. And you definitely had this a lot when you mentioned, you know, the battle of the minds. And yeah, and mm. There's another amazing book by the same author called Devotion of Suspect mm. X. This is yes. definitely about all the minds. This is all it is about. Mm. Um, you mentioned um, Agatha Christie there. Did It reminded mm. me a little bit of that kind of mm. old English novel in the way that it was set out. Um, I haven't, this is the first Japanese um, crime novel I've read. Has anybody read any other authors? Is this the general Japanese style or is this just his style? 
I mean, there is variety. So there is uh, complete um, uh, uh, police procedurals. They do have those as well. And there are, you know, and about police corruption and all that kind of thing. So they have those kind of things as well. And then they, they have the ones that are really sort of closer to psychological thrillers like out like Natsu or Kirino mm, and so Kirino. on that that you know are sort of slightly horror and you know crime mm. and you know and you're kind of watching them commit the crime mm. as and how they're going to get away with it so I think there is variety here but mm. this author specifically I think he's interested yeah. purely in the you know how are we going how? to mm. yeah find yeah. I agree. And, and above all the motivation because the motivation came out really mm -hmm. late you can mm -hmm. think yes but why is why? he doing it why mm -hmm. yeah. yeah now interesting i recently read another uh japanese thriller more psychological but also related to bullying and it's written by a woman i believe yeah uh, it's called confessions mm. by uh kanai minato mm. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 it's, Where the it's mother takes revenge for, yeah. And then and there's a teacher also. It's mm -hmm. very interesting because I was surprised that, oh, here is bullying again. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is a big thing in Japan, mm -hmm. sadly. Yeah. 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 What, well, they have an issue with bullying? Oh, yes. yes. It's, it's major. In, in schools, it starts in schools and it goes up to uh, work. It follows you everywhere. Mm. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, Why do you think that is? Mm. Why is that? Is it because it's not dealt with? Well, it's dealt with in a different way from what we do, as in uh, there is some bullying you have to go through in your life, which is a, something uh, I'm a teacher, so I, I can't understand this way of thinking. Mm -hmm. But apparently that's how you grow up. You, you have to go through being bullied or bully people. And, and at work, uh, there's a, high, a very strong... Um, uh, emphasis put on hierarchy and your your superiors mm. basically just bully you uh, until you become somebody uh, who's been there in, at the workplace for a long longer time then you you know maybe your bully moves out to something else or you move somewhere else and maybe you become a bully or there's no more bullying but it's it's, it's there all the time Mm. There's also the thing that they don't like people who are different. So there is the Japanese saying that mm. the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. Mm. So anybody mm. who is slightly different at school might dress differently or behave differently or, you know, be a nerd or whatever it is, will get bullied mercilessly. So yeah. um, especially in middle school, it seems to be particularly strong when sort of 11 to 13 14 year olds yeah there is wow. um uh, i was talking to a friend of ours who married a japanese lady and they lived in japan for a while and he said the culture is uh in in the family the children growing had to learn that you had to toe the line basically for everything that the family or the bigger group like the the village or the bigger group even the country they all had to behave the same and it, it, people who managed to get out of that are really badly looked at and um i think it, it's going a bit to pots now because younger generations are fed up with this system and that's why you see so many <laughs> young people with different color hair for example that kind of thing just to stick out they right, just do right it on right. purpose mm. yeah hopefully uh younger generations now will change things mm. that's where they say things are going to change in the younger generations so <laughs> um what I found were different with Malice, um, and I want to know your thoughts, is the killer was apprehended very early on in the book. Um, how did you feel working with that, that the book continued long after the killer was caught? I, I thought that was very unusual, and... Um... Mostly, 
the fact that they allowed the detective to carry on mm. looking for motive, motive because he did he wasn't convinced. I thought that I mean in real life that would never happen. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> did did you still enjoy the book reading? Oh it? yes, I mean I I I did. Yeah, um, I, I because I like that. Uh, how how <coughs> how was it done? That's for me. That's the main thing too. Uh, I prefer looking for the uh, somebody to show me how it was done and uh, and going through the motions of going through the how yes but this happened and then this happened and how come and and eventually get to the conclusion and I really liked it it was an interesting puzzle wasn't it to resolve as yeah. well of mm -hmm. how he had done it and also and and you know and you we didn't get it all at once we got certain elements of it and then there was another re revelation and and so on but and above all the motivation which we really didn't get i mean even the thing where they were all discussing where he went which would never happen that <laughs> he would be allowed to go and interview all the former schoolmates and all mm. that kind of thing looking for a motive mm. but yes we saw how different people's recollections were Mm. You know, some were saying, no, he was the one who was doing the bully. No, he was the one who was being bullied. Mm -hmm. and, and I was thinking, yeah, that's just like that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Where your memory goes all hazy. Everybody mm -hmm. has a different yeah. interpretation of past events. So, yeah, very interesting. Mm. Margo, did you want to say something? Did you? No, no. OK. <laughs> um, Favourite characters? Did you... Um, because there were some very different characters in there. I like the detective Kaga. <laughs> he, 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 um, having read two other books of um, the same author, Kaga is is definitely the character I preferred. The others are, I suppose, that they're portrayed in such a way that they either don't count or they're too naughty or too nasty or whatever. And so I like Kaga. <laughs> sometimes I kind of call him like the uh, the Japanese Colombo, because sometimes yes, he's dressed in a very uh, mm. way back and yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I kept having that picture of Peter Four coming back. <laughs> ah, <laughs> but excuse me. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Do you think we should have had a different point of view from anybody else there? Well, in a way, there was a when he interviewed the different people, maybe not about the crime itself, but about the different people uh, involved in in the story. The the as you as you were saying, the, uh, I think Marina, the the oh, was it coming back to the history of the, the the characters Nonoguchi and interviewing all these different people who met the two boys and uh, so in a way we had some different points of view but as, yeah it, it came quite late and and the wife somehow didn't count at all <laughs> yeah that, I think that's the point that I was trying to ask about yeah she, she, she was just like a weak clean that was just in, and insisted that her husband was really not like that. And I just imagine her being looking with big eyes and looking very scared of everybody. Do you think she should have had a on the page point of view or would it not have worked? I think it would have spoiled the surprise. Yeah. I think that's why he, the the narrator chose not to put mm. her point of view across too much. And also there was a thing that they had only been married very briefly. So mm. I think that we would maybe have discounted her point of view and said, well, she just doesn't know him well <laughs> enough yet or whatever it is. Although she'd been his editor for years. Mm. Yes. So she yeah. could have, yeah. Mm. Um. So it did, he, Kaga did dig into the motive. Did anybody have any idea where it was going? I did. 
from the start, uh, when he started, when he's not from the start, but when he said he wasn't convinced, or oh, and I could see how he's going to turn this all around. That uh, you know, he 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 Kada was not an an angry man uh, who was uh, desperate for to to be the center of the world and. But he was actually the nice one, and Nonoguchi was the one who was trying to portray him as the the, the nasty, basically. Yeah, I, I, I saw may, it. Sorry, so I maybe because I saw it in another book somehow. So I, 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 I yeah. Sorry, Emma. No, oh, that's all. I, I was saying I saw Soviet twist coming very early on, but I had obviously never guessed about the bullying part or the background. This I had no clue. No, I I felt he was going to to show that um, Nonoguchi wasn't a little poor little victim um, when he when he insisted on wanting to interview people in his past. Hmm. But I think it was earlier than that. I you know. When Kaga drove Nanaguchi home, that you know, after having discovered uh, the body, it wasn't just a friendly, I'll drive you home. You know, I used to know you. Are you okay? You've just found a body. There was, you could, there was more to it then from, from Kaga's point of view. Mm. As I suppose, I've having read three books of his, yes, he always, like Colombo did sticks himself to the person he knows is guilty. So you, you know is going to be that person. It's just the motive and the way it was done, I really wanted to see. And um, he, the story behind, I've, I've kind of had the feeling it was going to be a different uh, story behind. I mean, it was an amazingly convoluted <laughs> Uh, murder. <laughs> yeah. And all all it was was because the guy couldn't stand the other guy. Like his mother mm -hmm. couldn't stand the mother. Which is again is very strange. Very unlikely to happen. <laughs> mm. Was uh, were you surprised by the ending? <sighs> At, at what point is the end in the ending? Because there, there was so many info, uh, things happening. But, but the, I don't know. When the interview started, I wasn't anymore. I, I knew what was going to happen. But it's, it's the, the why. It's the why that I found uh, really, well, n not very likely. <laughs> yeah, I, I would say I was surprised by it. The discovery of, of this whole um, <laughs> convolution, if you like, of how how he gone about setting up, setting out um, all his plans, mm. um, you know, sort of going and going over and helping them pack so he could put the knife and the video in, into their <laughs> belongings and things, you know. I mean, um, yeah, mm. I've got that. One. Well, is, there's an element, I don't know if you've watched it, uh, well, if you like probably the Scandi Noir style, but it's a bit like that where you find these little things uh, that are insignificant but actually become very important and mm -hmm. a little detail, somebody said a sentence and then you find a big thing like the knife in the book or... Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, I suppose he, he's uh, influenced a lot by other right authors, maybe. Mm. And and mm. he, he likes his Colombo style um, detective. Um, on his uh, bio on Goodreads, he says he's as big as James Patterson mm -hmm. and some other authors. So um, in Japan, obviously. Um, I can't remember who else he names, but um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so were you, it was convoluted. Were you satisfied with how it all wrapped up? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think I was. If, if, yeah, if you accept how convoluted it is, yes. It's all quite well explained. <laughs> 
I thought also it had something interesting to say, the way it was written, it had something interesting to say about how we get sucked into other people's interpretation of events and and other people's narratives you know so the fact that he gave us at the start that hidaka with the with the uh, pet and so on or maybe i was just super sensitive to it at the moment but oh. it it made you kind of not see hidaka as a nice person mm. so you kept thinking uh, it really was a red herring because you kept thinking that it was actually uh, Nonoguchi who was going to have been the bullied one and mm. he was taking revenge and it mm. was you know so yes he's done it but he's done it for let's say a, a serious motive mm. and, and so on um, and um, yeah and then it it pulled the rug from under you because it wasn't like that at all. So, and then you realize, I mean, obviously I was rereading, so I, but, but this time I was kind of looking at how he'd done it and it mm. was quite clever the mm. way that, you know, we do mm. fall into that trap. Mm. It's like the halo effect or the, or the horns effect, isn't it? With first impressions mm. and mm. then it kind of sticks. Mm. So I thought that was quite well done. Yes, I think you're right. The fact that we had, um Nonaguchi's point of view narrative first mm. we tend to believe that narrative mm. because it's the first one we're hearing mm. so he was the one that went to see um Hadika um he was the one that told us about the pet mm. and um mm. he told us what had happened so we kind of fell into the trap of mm. believing everything that he said um yeah, so it was yeah. a clever way to set it up as having him lead the narrative first mm. i think it was very cleverly written because mm. it's so complicated so convoluted so i thought the structure really worked perfectly for this because yeah i mean it was easy to to get into the trap, but I mean, yes, Emma. it was. It's very clever in the way that he, you know. I should say he, he's as readers, we've been totally manipulated. <laughs> but because we're not used to reading that type of book, we are totally sort of sucked into it and <laughs> totally went with it. Um, whether you know your Japanese East Asian readers would not be, you know, would not be <laughs> so easily. Uh, buy into that mm. I don't know yeah. yeah I think you've got a point there that because we don't we mostly have um, books where we don't know what's going to happen at all yeah. but then, we, 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 we believe what we're told in the book yes, yeah. and usually the, the narrator is actually telling the truth however I'm thinking of one of Agatha Christie's um, Endless Night it's called and from the beginning to the end, it's the same, same person speaking. And when I read that, I was 13 or something like that. So I, I got completely <laughs> led into the believing everything that person was saying. And it turned out he was the killer in the end. Mm. But because he was speaking and trying to draw my uh, sympathy, whatever, obviously, it worked. <laughs> And um, actually, I've seen more of that now. I was thinking of Janice Hallett oh, as yes. well. Mm. Yeah, so there are more recently that have come up with documents, you know, and yes. you sort of, or the documents in the case that we mm. that we read, and mm. the Graham McRae. I hope okay. I. Oh, yeah, yeah. Graham so, Burnett McKay. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So you know where where they kind of we think oh because these are the documents and this is written evidence and so and we fall into that trap of mm -hmm. thinking yes yes that this mm -hmm. must be reliable mm -hmm. it's evidence right yes. so and then you know that's it the mm -hmm. narrator is unreliable or the documents <laughs> have been forged or something mm -hmm. like that so I think it's a mm -hmm. and I don't know who's influenced whom but yeah it's mm -hmm. it's an interesting. Um, way of of subverting our expectations yeah it's like that last book when we had the uh, the author with us um yeah the, the... i did think about that actually mm. yeah exactly mm. 
yeah. with justifications yes. and yeah. Mm. Who did we have with us last? No, with the true crime story. The true crime no, story. Joseph oh, Knox. Right. Yeah. We had. yeah. Joseph Knox, yeah. Mm. Mm. And that was Joseph Knox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um would you read a, another detective cargo novel? I have. <laughs> if you haven't already. <laughs> I must say, although he goes the same way with the others, is is um it it is different. The books of the other two books I've read are, are very different from this one. Do you think in this one we get? Well, I've I've only read three so far. I don't know how many he's got. Sorry, Marina. Yeah, I I think only three or four have been translated so far. Mm. So. Yeah, I but think there are eight, eight in the, in the Japanese so far, but yeah, only four have been translated. No? Yeah, and and the yeah. prime also in it. Well, no, it's not a prime for this series. I don't know why, but they they never translate them in the order they were published. No, they, no. they think that the book, you know, ah, may not work for American or British uh, uh, culture, so they try start another mm. one, and they oh yeah, maybe this one's. I, I hate this yes, book. yes. So do I. I've got to mm. start with the first one. Yeah, and I think with, in this one we get a bit more about Kaga's background and mm. you know the fact that he was a teacher and he was mm. unable to stop the bullying and you know that kind of thing. So I think this one felt a bit more personal somehow mm. uh, with Kaga. While well, in the other one mm. he's kind of just puzzle Detective, solving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you like to know more about your detectives? Or do you yeah. just like the crime what, element? In what way? What, what, in what way do you mean? Um, their personal history, their um, their personal life, or would you prefer the crime novel just to focus on the crime? I think as it was done here, where the personal details you're getting are ones that relate to the crime. I'm, yeah. um, you know, or how influences his thoughts on the crime are fine. I, you know, I, I really can't be bothered reading about their broken down marriage and their alcoholism and, you know, all, and, and how they like this particular jazz musician. You know, I, I feel that that's a bit sort of unnecessary. <laughs> it's that additional padding, isn't it? Well, um, I actually mm. like it. I actually like it. it. It makes them more like a real people. Because Kaga in particular is such an analytical person who just sees the crime and how to solve it. He really needs to have a body. <laughs> to me, he's just a spirit that tries to work and there's no, there's no person there. Mm. <laughs> I must admit, I'm a character reader. Um, I like Karen Slaughter's um, mm. books because her I feel her characters are really... Um, particularly well drawn and um, so yeah we haven't read any of hers have we I think I read one but I can't even remember which one um, no in the, within the book club we haven't read mm, yeah. I'm sorry um, Rebecca who Karen's. did you say I didn't... Karen Slaughter oh okay um, but it's very difficult with her, Karen's because her series are so long running <laughs> she does have a couple of standalones Mm. So, um, any more thoughts on Malice? Mm. I don't know. Um, I know we're looking at Japanese, but have we? Can is it possible so one day to look at other cultures like Korean writers? Absolutely. Mm. Um, we won't do it next because we've just covered yeah. a translated novel but mm. um, definitely mm. we'll do another translated um, theme mm -hmm. um, another month maybe mm. the month after this or in a couple of months yeah um, any more thoughts on this book before I stop the recording 
Well, mm -hmm. just I thought the title was very apt because mm -hmm. which and it kind of gave you a clue where where it was going. So you knew that it was something, you know, you might think initially, oh, it was some uh, rivalry between writers mm -hmm. or, you know, something like that. But um, but yeah, but I, I I was thinking that actually it's this sort of malice could be the title given to a lot of Japanese novels crime novels yes. that i've read or psychological mm. thriller type novels that i've read so it mm. seems to be you know on the surface we're too polite to say anything but underneath mm. you know we're we're planning some very nasty mm. evil deeds mm. <laughs> yes. so. and is this is this the exact same uh, title in japanese I don't, I, I don't know what the original title is in Japanese. I haven't looked, yeah. Do you know, we never normally um, look at the title of the book. Yeah, it means do. malice. Yeah, I just checked. Mm. Yeah, it means yeah. exactly the same thing. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, we never normally assess the title of the book we're reading and its relevance to the um, to the book. So it's interesting that you brought it up. Mm. No, it really struck well. me how how yeah it fitted yeah you know for the authors among you i mean being an author was very much part of this book mm. and mm. you but you had the thing where you had um hikado who was this uh, very literally well thought of not a novelist and then you have uh, nanaguchi who writes children's books but mm. We're told in the in the novel that Japanese people have stopped reading books. So really, it's only parents, because I think, it's, again, it's very much applies in Britain as well. Parents buy more books for children so they can end up being the, the better sellers and the more profitable, I would have thought, mm. um, than your literary novels. Any thoughts? Yeah, but he was just starting out in his career, so he hadn't yet been really successful. And also, I guess the other one was winning awards. So, you know. Yeah, but it, there seems to be this thing that if you win an award rather than being a children's author, and you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know children's authors don't do very well in the UK. I think they do better in the States. All right. Um, but they don't do very well in the UK. It's not a very big market here. Well, I seem to have remembered reading something recently. It said that children's books were the ones that so you know, had the highest turnover of, of numbers. I think of books. that um, the only reason that is the case is for your celebrity children's authors mm -hmm. that are carrying oh, right. the market. Right. Okay. okay. But mm -hmm. um, I know a few um, children's authors that are now crime authors. Oh, <laughs> so oh, it's... Yeah. okay. Um, any last thoughts? Mm. No, okay. 